A hernia is a hole, typically in the abdominal wall, which allows the abdominal contents to bulge out. Hernias can happen in many different locations. Common hernias are umbilical hernias, which is at the belly button, epigastric hernias, which happen up above that, also called ventral hernias sometimes, and then incisional hernias. Incisional hernias can happen anywhere someone has had an incision on the abdomen. The most common place is along the midline, up from the breastbone down to the pubic bone. Anywhere in that area one can develop an incisional hernia. Hernias can cause problems. They can cause symptoms of a bulge. They can cause discomfort or pain, particularly when they are sticking out. And if they come out and get trapped, that can lead to strangulation. So when they're trapped, it's called incarcerated. And when it strangulated means that the blood supply is cut off and that becomes a surgical emergency. So those are reasons why we recommend fixing hernias. Also, the discomfort that they cause and then just the fact that they are there. Uh, there's no way that they can repair themselves. There's no medication you can take to fix them. Uh, and so those are all reasons uh, to repair them. Alternatives to fixing hernias would be observation, which means just watching it. Now, if it's a small hernia, it's not causing any significant symptoms, that's a reasonable approach. If the hernia gets larger and starts causing symptoms, then that's probably not a good way to continue. A truss or binder is some type of elastic band that helps hold the hernia contents in. The reason for using this is largely symptom control, and we usually don't recommend this as a long-term uh, way of treating hernias. And then surgical repair is often going to be done with mesh in these types of hernias, uh, and largely that depend, depends on the size of the hernia. And there are uh, three different uh, recognized approaches to fixing these hernias. An open repair, a laparoscopic repair, or a robotic repair. In an open repair, depending on what type of hernia it is, we usually make an incision and then put in some mesh. For example, if it's an umbilical hernia, we'll typically make a small incision under the umbilicus and then go in and if it's a small opening, put in some sutures. If it's a larger opening, put in a piece of mesh and sew that in place. If it's a, an epigastric or ventral or incisional hernia, for an open repair, we typically make an incision through the old scar and go in and then sew in a piece of mesh. If it's a very small epigastric or ventral hernia, it can be done just with sutures. But if it's of any size, if mesh is not used, there's a very, very high recurrence rate. The laparoscopic and robotic approaches are similar in that we make small incisions, usually on the side of the abdomen, and come inside with a scope and then look over to the area of the hernia and end up putting in some type of mesh which will cover the whole area of the hernia defect. And then that's either tacked or sewn in place um, to keep it in place. The advantages of doing a hernia repair laparoscopically or robotically are that you have small incisions. So there is less problems with wound complications. With an open repair, with a large incision down the midline, there's a much higher risk for wound complications. With an open or laparoscopic repair, there tends to be quite a bit of pain because we have to use sutures or tacks to hold these mesh in, play, 
the mesh is in place and they go through the abdominal wall and that can cause significant pain. In the robotic approach, the mesh is often sewn in place and that seems to cause less pain than the other two approaches. Now, not every approach is an option for every type of hernia. So you'll really need to ask your surgeon which is the best approach for you and the hernia that you have. Now, every operation carries some risk. So, in general, there are risks of blood clots, pneumonia, heart attack, stroke, bleeding, infection. Every operation carries these risks. Specific to these operations, there's a risk of recurrence of the hernia. As mentioned before, if the hernia is large and mesh is not used, there is a significant chance of it coming back, uh, as high as 40% or more. There are some things that cause that risk to be even higher. Two very important health issues that can contribute to that are obesity and smoking. If someone is smoking, their tissue does not heal as well, and so the chance of recurrence of the hernia or infection in the incision is much, much higher. So we will not do these repairs if you are actively smoking. The other is obesity. With a BMI over 40, the chance of recurrence of the hernia, the chance of mesh complications and other complications is much higher, and the risks uh, definitely outweigh the benefits in those situations. So we're happy to work with you on different methods of stopping smoking and losing weight to get to a point that those hernias can be repaired. Another risk is mesh complications. Fortunately, these are pretty uncommon. Um, they can be things like the mesh shrinking, it can migrate, it can get stuck to the intestine depending on its location uh, in the abdomen. That can cause fistulas into the mesh. So there can be some pretty bad complications with the mesh. We use special mesh meshes that have uh, protective layers on them to help uh, uh, protect them from the intestine. And we do a variety of other techniques in placement to try to minimize those risks. However, if you look at the risk of complication with mesh versus the risk of the hernia coming back and the potential complications that that creates, it's a much, much higher risk to not use the mesh than to use the mesh. Another risk is injury to the bowel or the bladder, depending on where the hernia defect is. These are uncommon, but can be uh, bad complications. And then a seroma is a fluid collection, which is fairly common after one of these hernia repairs. And typically that fluid will go away on its own. Sometimes your surgeon will leave a drain in place to help get rid of some of that fluid. Uh, and sometimes if the fluid is accumulated, will need to be aspirated, or in other words, a needle will be placed into it to pull the fluid off. But most of the time, we can just watch them and they go away on their own. Recovery for these hernias is typically three to six weeks with no strenuous activity. Sometimes, depending on um, how good your tissue is and how well it's going to hold the mesh, that, that time period may be extended. What we're trying to do is limit the strain against the repair while the wound is healing. And then once it's healed, people can usually get back to fairly normal activities. So that is umbilical, incisional, epigastric, and ventral hernias and how we repair them. If you have any additional questions, please be sure to ask your surgeon.